Hi you guys, welcome back. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and this is your weekly Meaningful Musings, where we simply let the universe decide what we will be talking about and how the message will be delivered. So let's see how we're gonna get this week's message. We will be using the Chakra Wisdom Oracle Cards, so stay tuned. This Friday is October 1st, so I will be doing the annual Halloween Spooktacular that I've been doing on this channel for the past couple of years. And so I just wanted to let you guys know, in case there are a lot of new viewers and subscribers out there, that starting on Friday, I will be posting videos related to the darker side of spirituality, because we are not only of light and love there's also darkness inside of us otherwise we wouldn't know that light and love aspect right so because the world is dual and we live in this dualistic world and because i'm a believer of all things that are unbelievable i spend the month of october looking at the darker side of spirituality so that we can understand ourselves from the deepest possible level both as individuals and as society So this week's Meaningful Musing will be coming from the Chakra Wisdom Oracle Cards by Tori Hartman. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get these cards out for us and I'll be giving them a few shuffles here so that I can get the deck ready. So let's give them some shuffles. All right, so let's see the first message that we'll receive today is all about passion. And this one is orange. So this is really connecting with the messages about your sacral chakra. Your sacral chakra is the second chakra, the second of the seven major chakras. And that chakra is very much connected to your life's passion. So what is making you feel passionate? Um, maybe it's time for you to connect with something that gives you that sense of feeling passionate. Maybe you haven't been feeling that lately and it's time to turn it on. Um, the sacral chakra has everything to do with creation. So it has a lot to do with um, fertility, not only physical fertility, but, you know, more of a metaphysical fertility as well and your ability to create in the world. Um, and then we also got facade, and this one is yellow. Now, this card has everything to do with your solar plexus chakra, your third of the seven major chakras, about an inch or two above your belly button. Now, it's interesting. I find it interesting because it says facade. Um, so my first instinct from this card, especially coming right after the passion card, is that maybe you aren't quite living you're not quite living up to your full potential at this time. And it could have to do with your self-confidence. It could have to do with how you see yourself in the world and how that is connected to your personal power. So it's time to turn up the personal power to feel the, you know, I want you to really feel your solar plexus. How do you feel? Is it um, do you feel secure in who you are? Do you have high self-esteem? Or is this something that you need to work on and, you know, improve? I dropped a card, so of course this will be our third card. Um, this one is Destiny. And uh, so this card is speaking on, honestly, with all of the other two cards that we had spoke about, the Destiny card is really telling you to 
feel into what you are meant to do in this lifetime. So maybe you've been thinking a lot about who you are, how you're expressing yourself, and how you want to express yourself in the world moving forward. So one really cool thing about the Chakra Wisdom Oracle is that each card actually has its very own story that the author had created for each card. Now, each story is like a specific story with characters, but it's the underlying message in the story um, that is supposed to be delivered through the image as well as the storytelling. So I would love to share with you the three different stories for these three different cards. So the first card that came out was passion. And again, that was related to the sacral chakra. So let's see what the Chakra Wisdom Oracle Guidebook um, has to say as far as the story related to this chakra card. And it says here, passion, princess of amber, I quietly sizzle and shine. And it says here, the legend is the princess of amber spends her time volunteering. No person or task is beneath her. She loves her subjects and looks after them like a loyal servant. When the newspapers criticize her, her family begs her to behave more like royalty. She refuses. The people hold a free election and to the surprise of the aristocracy, vote for the princess as their new leader. So the inspiration involved in this card says, you are correct to feel passionate about your position. Follow your instincts, for you know intuitively what's right for you. I immediately feel, because it's relating kind of to me, um, so maybe this message will relate, but this legend and inspiration immediately made me think personally about my YouTube channel and how... It's something that I put a lot of time and energy into. A lot of my creative spark is put into this YouTube channel. Um, and even though other people might not understand my need to create content for you guys, um, or, you know, friends and family may not understand why I would place so much importance on this channel. Um, and basically, why would I put so much time and energy into something that I'm not actually being paid monetarily to do. Um, but it's because I'm following my instincts. And I know intuitively that this is right for me, right? So you may have something similar in your life that other people may not understand, but you know that you're following your heart. So the inspiration here is to stick with what you know is right for you, no matter what other people think of it, family, friends, and the like. Now, it also says here there is a personal inquiry tied to this card, and it says, are my daily actions supporting my real passion? What am I willing to stand for? So the passion card is asking as well, whatever it is that you are putting your energy and awareness into, is it worth it? Is it something that is going to be sustainable for you? Some key ideas for following your passion is being authentic, taking a stand for yourself, being acknowledged, feeling ostracized by family and friends, being emotionally centered, um, strong feminine en energy, and a happy outcome. Those are the key ideas for the passion card. And these are all fitting in with, like I said, the example that I just gave you in, from my own life. And it may also relate to something in your life. So our second card was facade. This one is yellow, so it's associated with your solar plexus chakra. And in the guidebook here, it says, bronze god, this isn't who I am. And the legend says, the bronze boy, Darnell, was young when his father died, and he became the man of the family. Out for a walk one day, many years later, he was mesmerized by the sight of children playing. As a child, he'd never played, and he hid behind a tree, crying bitterly, then quickly buried his emotions. At the very end of his life, on his way to heaven, he stopped at the park and finally reclaimed the inner child that he had left behind many years before. So it says here, the inspiration for the facade is, if you're unhappy in your relationships, you may be relating to others through a false 
sense of duty. So give up being something that you're not, right? So the solar plexus chakra is all about your identity, how you see yourself in the world, your self-esteem, um, your confidence. And so in this story, it was saying that the boy um, had to kind of be the man of the family because his father had died when he was in a young age. So obviously that would have, the legend here is that something had happened in your life that made you take on a different identity than maybe what you want. <laughs> so the facade I'm seeing is kind of like the character from this legend, if she didn't follow her heart, right? So if she just was the princess um, and didn't try to help people, which is what her heart was asking her to do. Um, so anyway, the facade is like this life that we're living that isn't quite lined up with what we actually want. It says here, the inspiration is, if you are unhappy in your relationships, you may be relating to others through a false sense of duty. Give up something you're not, right? And then personal inquiry. Bronze God is about reclaiming life. What have I done to heal my childhood pain? And then the key ideas are disassociating from yourself and reclaiming your life by healing those childhood pains. Keywords here are recovery integration, and play. So obviously you're going to want to stay up in the higher vibrations of consciousness as you try to figure out what direction you want to go with your life. And if you know where your issues have stemmed from your past, then now's the time to reconcile those things within yourself that need to be reconciled so that you can live the life that you actually desire rather than living this life that was seemingly placed before you without your permission. Now, the last card that fell out today for the message was the destiny card. And as you can see, this one is framed in gray. And gray is a neutral card in this, um, in this deck. So rather than it being associated with one particular chakra, this card is neutral. And it does have an at-a-glance um, description here. So the at a glance description for destiny, it says here, black and white. Because as you can see, uh, the two people bowing down before the monk or wise people, one is in a white robe, one is in a black robe. And it says, black is the shade that demands to be taken seriously. As it absorbs all the colors, black emits the warm, powerful energy of the protector. Unlike black, white is isolated. Together, they balance and create. You will be guided by your angels to what is best for you and all concerned. So another immediate kind of message I'm receiving as I read that is black and white are dual, obviously. One is reflective, one is receptive. So one is aggressive, one's receptive. So um, I also think of it as light. Uh, you have light and dark. So the light can be referred to as your action side, whereas the darkness is your receptive side. So that side is more where um, the part of you that would spend time in prayer, in meditation, your intuition and things like that. And the white robe could represent that side of you that is out there taking the action steps necessary to create what you want in the world. So let's see what else the guidebook has to say. Um, about this card specifically. So I just have to find it here. Here we go. So it says here, destiny, black and white, together we are stronger than alone. Uh, because then this kind of includes all parts of us. But the legend says, black and white are in heaven, waiting to go back to earth yet again to complete their work. When they meet and fall in love, they learn that they will not be together on earth. In previous lives, their love was ill-fated. They appealed to the council of great spirits who turned down their requests to be together. But the great servant appears and grants their wish. Together, they accomplish greater things than they could have done alone. So the inspiration for this card is take a risk. 
Dare to have your life the way that you decide. Are you willing to make sacrifices to have what you desire? So this is so much in alignment with the passion and the facade because obviously you'll have to give up your identity and who you thought you were in the past. You have to reconcile the childhood uh, past part of you to really live in the passionate side of you and to really understand who you are in this lifetime. So yes, what sacrifices will you make? Those sacrifices are really just letting go of the parts of yourself that are not in alignment with your true passion and who you really are. Now it says here, the personal inquiry is, what tools do I need to form my own destiny? Am I ready for my destiny? So these are some important questions that you can ask yourself during meditation and then just wait to receive the answers. Some key ideas related to the destiny card says, true love, taking a stand, positive omen, radical thinking, deep satisfaction, and ability to change. And keywords are love, pathway, and faith. So, especially when it comes to love involved in this destiny card, I believe that that love is not really a romantic love between two individuals, but it's more of that internal love of self and of your soul that Rumi spoke about in his poems. So the lovers are your conscious and subconscious mind coming together to create in this world. You couldn't do it with only the black or the white. So let's say this, the white robe represents your conscious mind, the part of you that's out here in the world. And the black robe represents the inner intuitive person inside of you, um, the part that's connected to spirit. So the reason we're able to create is because we're here as both the lovers, the lovers that Rumi talks about in his poems. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share this video with all of your friends out there. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would just love for you to click subscribe down below. And once you've subscribed, you can click that notification bell so that you can get notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.